Relaxes me so. Oh, there you are, ghoulies, and here we are once again on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. And of course, tonight's movie is Plan 9 from Outer Sp uh -huh. Space by Ed Wood. What's it? You don't like that? Uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space has to be one of the worst movies I have ever seen. But but uh, Ed Wood fancied himself after uh, our, our other guest no, here tonight, Ed Orson Wood Welles. Fancied himself. That's you the key and your word. B movies that you like showing your pathetic, sad audiences. I don't get it. I really. Oh, my audiences love Who these in the world would want to fancy themselves after Orson Welles? <laughs> well, Orson Welles is a legend that came from Kenosha. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. He did That's come right. from Kenosha. Remember That's why that. I'm having this very special picnic out in front of your uh, birthplace, sir. You remember the place pretty well. I yes, do. I remember. My and why house. on earth are there peas in front of me? Well, we thought you liked peas. Oh, the jokes. They never end. <laughs> ah, well, the, the jokes usually end the doctor. commercial you couldn't finish. Oh, oh here we go yeah, again. And that, that never got done, that project. You know, there's a lot of projects that never got well, done. Well, that's what happens when you work with imbeciles. Uh-huh. I, I know the feeling. I, I do that every day. Imbeciles uh -huh. is how I pronounce it, uh -huh. madam. It's wrong. Uh, of course, you're familiar with uh, Ed Wood, Plan 9 from Outer Space that stars Vampyra and Bella Lugosi. Yes. Unfortunately, that's... About three hours of my life, I will never get back. Oh, this movie's about an hour and 15 minutes long. Yes, it just well, seemed like it the was three stress, hours. the intestinal stress it caused me. I will never get those three hours. Oh, back. well, a good colonoscopy ought to help that out. I, I agree. I do I do like uh, Bela Lugosi. I think he is a fantastic actor, but I think his talents are just not used to uh, what they could be used for with these B-movies. I don't get it. Well, this this one, he has a, a slight disadvantage because he didn't know he was going to end up uh, in this he's movie. He's dead. Well, he was dead when this film came out. I know. Uh, this was some pickup <laughs> footage that Ed Wood had done and uh, managed to incorporate into his later latest feature, which was originally supposed to be Grave Robbers mm -hmm. from Outer Space. Uh, but the uh, Baptist Church of Beverly Hills didn't like the title. Because they were funding it. Ah, uh, well, yeah, they were funding it, supposedly. Suppose they deny it, that uh, the... the it, it doesn't matter what title they went with. It was sure to be a disaster anyway. Ah, uh, so. well, uh, well, it's not a disaster. I mean, there's far worse films. Have you ever seen The Beast of Yucca Flats? I have <laughs> not. Well, that could have been a role Orson could have played himself in a later Who period. thinks of these titles? Seriously, I mean... Uh, I don't know, but uh, if you, there is worse. Thing. I mean, did you ever see that movie they made in the 90s with uh, the DiCaprio called Titanic? That's the worst <laughs> movie never I've ever seen saw in my life. It, never saw Terrible, it. terrible conditions I here. think I'm one I of the only the people on Earth who has never seen that movie. She looks like she could have... proud I, of it. I, She looks like she could have come off the Titanic. Oh, no, no, That was 1912. Be nice to your grandmother. She'll put a spell on you. Yes. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> All right, Julie. I don't know. All kinds of problems here <laughs> on Crimson Theater. Of course, we are celebrating Orson Welles being inducted into the Television and Radio Horror Host Hall of Fame. Uh, believe me or not, uh, it's a big event. Or oh, well, it was a big event. Uh, He's a, a big event. Right. Look at him. I, you know. I beg your pardon, madam, and I've never heard of such an event. Well, it's you, unbelievable. You will. You will because you're you're you're. This really it's exists. A fitting place for you. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, and, and well, you staying, you know, yeah, you staying you here know, in Kenosha's fitting place. As far as I understand, President later on, Taft was buried in a piano box. I'm thinking you're going to need two piano boxes. 
What does that have to do with anything? Your size. Well, seriously. He was too big for Kenosha. Let's forget. Yeah, you know, thank you. A thank man you. with ambitions like <clears throat> Orson Welles, especially uh, in the later period. Maybe Kenosha now he would be better on. You know, mm. a lot of people don't realize this, <sighs> but George Orson left with his family, my son and his mother, Beatrice Ives Wells, when he was six, when his parents Moved to Chicago, Illinois. Well, how could we blame him then? Exactly. I mean, I I, 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 I had man. enough of this he city. He had no so. choice. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have gotten out of here. So. Speaking of no choice, you've got no choice. You're going to get right into it now. That's right. Plan <laughs> 9 from outer space uh, starring uh, Bela Lugosi uh, and Vampira uh, and Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. And uh, she's the best part. Part. Good luck. Oh. Good she's luck. the best part of the show. No, no way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about <laughs> Please. Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now, for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. We are giving you all the evidence based only on the secret testimony of the miserable souls who survived this terrifying ordeal. The incidents, the places. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Let us punish the guilty. Let us reward the innocent. My friend, can your heart stand the shocking facts about Grave robbers from outer space. on this earth know that there is a time to live and that there is a time to die yet death is always a shock to those left behind it is even more of a shock when death the proud brother comes suddenly without warning just at sundown a small group gathered in silent prayer around the newly opened grave of the beloved wife of an elderly man sundown of the day, yet also the sundown of the old man's heart. For the shadows of grief clouded his very reason. The funeral over, the saddened group left the graveside.
It was when the gravediggers started their task that strange things began to take place. Fifteen to four. Yep, right on schedule. There's the old San Fernando Valley out there now. You better ready you in for landing instructions, Danny. Right, Jeff. Burbank Tower, this is American Flight 812. Over. Wouldn't surprise me any if he's asleep this time of the morning. American Flight 812, this is Burbank Tower. If I were asleep, you'd never get on the ground. In your case, maybe I ought to leave you up there for good. Over. You got me that time, Mac. This American Flight 812 requested. <laughs> Burbank Tower to American Flight 812, over. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812, over. Holy mackerel. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812, are you in trouble? Trouble? Take a look for yourself. What in the world? That's nothing from this world. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812, are you in trouble? Are you in trouble? <laughs> Mayday, Mayday. Stand by, Burbank Tower. You suppose a passenger saw it? I doubt it. Most of them are asleep. But it was quite a jolt, Jeff. I'll check. Good. We'll get it ready for landing. And keep it quiet until we get instructions. Right. Okay, Danny. American Flight 812, reporting to Burbank Tower. Over. Did you hear anything? I thought I did. Don't like hearing noises, especially when there ain't supposed to be any. Yeah, sort of spooky-like. Maybe we're getting old. Whatever it is, it's gone now. That's the best thing for us, too. Gone. Yeah, let's go. his wife's death became greater and greater agony. The home they had so long shared together became a tomb, a sweet memory of her joyous living. The sky to which she had once looked was now only a covering for her dead body. flowers she had planted with her own hands became nothing more than the lost roses of her cheeks. Confused by his great loss, the old man left that home never to return again. At the funeral of the old man, unknown to his mourners, his dead wife was watching. First his wife, then he. Tragic. Tell me something. Why was his wife buried in the ground and he sealed in a crypt? Something to do with family tradition, a superstition of some sort. Oh. Well, it's getting dark. Let's be in our way. Then, as two of his mourners left his final resting place,
Minutes later, the police, led by Inspector Daniel Clay, arrived at the scene. Who found them? The man and girl. Medical uh, examiner been around yet? Just left. The morgue wagon ought to be along most any time. You get their statement? Yeah, as much as we could. They're pretty scared. Finding a mess like this ought to make anyone frightened. Have one of the boys take the guy and the girl back to town. You take charge. Okay, Inspector. What are you going to do? Look around a little. It's pretty dark out there. Once you get beyond the range of those lights, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. I will get one of the flashlights from the patrol car. Hey, be careful, Clay. I'm a big boy now, Johnny. Okay. Looks like a bobcat tore into them. Yeah. Say, Lieutenant, did you get that funny odor? How could I miss it? Oh, that'll be the morgue wagon now. That's the fifth siren in the last hour. Uh, something's happened down at the cemetery. A lot of police cars and lights. I stopped, but I didn't see anything. Oh, well, whatever it is, the morning paper will carry the whole story. You seem to still be up there somewhere. Maybe I am. I don't think I've ever seen you in this mood before. I guess it's because I've never been in this mood before. Something about your flight? Yeah. What happened, Jeff? I saw a flying saucer. Saucer? You mean the kind from up there? Yeah, well, its counterpart. It was shaped like a huge cigar. Dan and Edith saw it, too. When it passed over, the whole compartment lighted up with a blinding glare. Then there was a tremendous wind that practically knocked us off our course. Well, did you report it? Yeah. I radioed in immediately, and they said, we'll keep it quiet until you land. And as soon as we landed, Big Army Brass grabbed us and made us swear to secrecy about the whole thing. Oh, it burns me up. These things have been seen for years. They're here. It's a fact. And the public ought to know about it. There must be something more you can do about it. Oh, no, there isn't. Oh, but what's the use of making a fuss? But last night I saw a flying object that couldn't have possibly been from this planet. But I can't say a word. I'm muzzled by army brass. I can't even admit I saw the thing.
Sounds like Kay's in trouble. At that apparition we saw had something to do with it. Come on. Is he dead? Yeah. He's messed up as bad as those two back there. Suppose that saucer or whatever it was had something to do with this? Your guess is good as mine, Larry. One thing's sure. Inspector Clay's dead. Murdered. And somebody's responsible. You're in charge now, Lieutenant. Yeah, guess I am. Calvin? Yes, sir? Get back up the car and get on the radio. Tell the coroner he's got to make another trip out here. Well, how about the lab boys? Well, who do you think we left back up the car, Boy Scouts? Come on, Larry. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for another. It is always difficult to have last words over the grave of a friend. And Inspector Daniel Clay was a friend, a dear friend to me and to all of us. The bell has rung upon his great career. Now we lay him to rest, a rest well-deserved, but so premature. <laughs> People turning south from the freeway were startled when they saw three flying saucers high over Hollywood Boulevard. A woman startled by the sight in the sky telephones the police. comes a time in each man's life when he can't even believe his own eyes. Saucers seen over Hollywood. Flying saucers seen over Washington, D.C. The army convoy moved into the field. Rockets were quickly set up. Colonel Tom Edwards, in charge of saucer field activities, was to make the greatest decision of his career. He made that decision. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire. as they had come. 
they were gone. Even to the piercing eye of radar and the speeding jet fighters. Quite a sight, wasn't it, sir? A sight I'd rather not be seeing. Are you worried about them, sir? Well, they must have a reason for their visits. Visits? Well, that would indicate visitors. Well, the big gun's a usual way of welcoming visitors. We haven't always fired at them. Oh? For a time, we tried to contact them by radio, but no response. Then they attacked a town. A small town, I'll admit, but nevertheless a town of people. People who died. I never heard about that, sir. Well, it was covered up by the higher echelon. Take any fire, any earthquake, any major disaster, then wonder. Flying saucers, Captain, are still a rumor, officially. Looks like we beat them off again, sir. What do they want? Where are they from? Where are they going? They, sir? Who? Well, this is a training maneuver, sir. We only did a little practice firing at the clouds. Yeah. I wonder what their next move will be. What will their next move be? Your space commander has returned from Earth. Send him in. You have your report? We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. What progress has been made? We contacted government officials. They refuse our existence. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. It's been absolutely impossible to work through these Earth creatures. Their soul is too controlled. Plan 9. Ah, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long-distance electrode shot into the pineal and pituitary glands of recent dead. Have you attempted any of this plan as yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? We have risen too so far. We shall be just as successful on more. The living, they have no suspicion of your movements? We had to dispose of one policeman. However, none of those risen have been seen, at least not by anyone who still remains alive. It's too bad it must be handled this way. But it must. Those who we take from the grave will lead the way for our other operations. And so yes, Excellency. Continue on. Report to me in two Earth days. I feared His Excellency wouldn't take our report this well. Well, had he been dealing with our own people, his reaction would have been completely different. He understands the difficulties of the Earth race. What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well, as long as they can think, we'll have our problems. But those whom we're using cannot think. They are the dead, brought to a simulated life by our electrode guns. You know, it's an interesting thing when you consider the Earth people who can think are so frightened by those who cannot, the dead. Well, our ship should be regenerated. We better get started. I still think you ought to go in town and stay with your mother until I get back. 
This is our home, and nothing's going to take me from it. Besides, most men try and keep their wives from going home to Mama. That's not the point. That's all the point there's going to be. Now, toddle off and fly your flying machine, darling. But if you see any more flying saucers, will you tell them to pick another house to buzz? Be careful. Don't worry about me. Oh, you're the only thing I do worry about. Oh, forget about the flying saucers. They're up there. But there's something in that cemetery. And that's too close for comfort. The saucers are up there. And the cemetery's out there. But I'll be locked up in there. Now, off to your wild blue yonders. You promise you'll lock your doors immediately? I promise. Besides, I'll be in bed before half an hour is gone with your pillow beside me. My pillow? Well, I have to have something to keep me company while you're away. Sometimes in the night when it does get a little lonely, I reach over and touch it. Then it doesn't seem so lonely anymore. <laughs> a crazy kid. Love you, darling. See you Thursday. Goodbye, honey. You know I'm not leaving here until you lock safely inside. All right, darling. If you're especially nice, I may even lock the side door. And be sure you keep the yard lights on. silent this trip, Jeff. Hmm? You haven't spoken ten words since takeoff. I guess I'm preoccupied, Danny. We've got 33 passengers back there that have time to be preoccupied. Flying this flybird doesn't give you that opportunity. I guess you're right, Danny. Paula? Yeah? There's nothing wrong between you two. Oh, no, nothing like that. Just that I'm worried she being there alone and those strange things flying over the house and those incidents in the graveyard these past few days has just got me worried. Well, maybe they haven't figured out those crazy skybirds yet, but I'd give you 50 to 1 odds the police have cleared up that cemetery thing by now. I hope so. If you're really that worried, Jeff, why don't you go radio in and find out? Max should be on duty at the field by now. He could call Paul and relay the message to you. Hi, Edie. Hi, Silence. I haven't heard a word from this end of the plane since we left the field. I've just been giving himself and me a study in Silence. Boys aren't feuding. No, no, Edie, nothing like that. Hey, Edie, how about you and me balling it up in Albuquerque? Albuquerque? Have you read that flight schedule, boy? What about it? We land in Albuquerque at 4 a.m. That's strictly a 9 o'clock town. Well, I know a friend that'll help us. Let's have the problem first. Huh, Danny? Ah, oh, he's worried about Paula. I read about that cemetery business. I tried to get two kids not to buy too near one of those things. We get there soon enough as it is. He thought it'd be quiet and peaceful there. No doubt about that. It's quite all right, like a tomb. I'm sorry, Jeff, that was a bad joke. Say, I almost forgot what I came in here for. How's the coffee situation? Mm, that's for me. It sure wouldn't hurt the thing, Edie. Okay, be right back. And say, Jeff, make that call to Mac. Nah, not only did she throw cold water on my Albuquerque plan, but now she's repeating herself. How about that Albuquerque ball? I can't resist your charm, Danny boy. Residents near the cemetery paid little attention to the blast of thunder and the flash of lightning. But from the blast arose the moving figure of the dead old man. Hello? Who? 
back. Sure, I'm all right. I just fell asleep. Tell Jeff I'm all right. Okay, Mac. Thanks for calling. Good night.
in a moment. You can open it now, Tana. Turn off the electrodes quickly. They can't tell us from anyone else. It's tough to find something when you don't know what you're looking for. I don't think the lieutenant does either. Then what are we doing out here? I was off duty an hour ago. Oh, don't ask me any questions. I'm just a hard hand just like you. What do you suppose that noise was? Whatever it was, it's no more strange than the other things happening around this cemetery. Spirits like old farmer Caller talked about. <laughs> well, maybe. The only spirits he saw tonight were those I smelled on his breath. Oh, don't forget, Miss Trent claims to have seen them, too. She didn't have anything on her breath. She was hysterical. Well, true, she was frightened and in a state of shock. But don't forget that torn nightgown and the scratched feet. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Guess that's why you're a detective lieutenant and I'm still a uniformed cop. Sometimes it's only the brakes, Larry. Meantime, let's Lieutenant, get going. Lieutenant, did you hear that? How could we help it? It sure was strange. Know what it was? No more than you do. If we're in for orders, I'd get out of here right now. It was a saucer. A flying saucer? What makes you say that? Do you remember the noise we heard the other night? We were knocked to the ground. How could I forget? Exactly. But you're not remembering that sound. There you're wrong, Lieutenant. I'm with the fact the sound is similar, but what about the blinding light? Well, haven't you heard? And many times a saucer hasn't had a glow. Or a light of any kind, for that matter. That proves it. What next, Lieutenant? Oh, Lieutenant, maybe this doesn't mean much, but uh, Jamie and me found a grave that looks like it's been busted into. What? Where? Why, uh, why? Come on, man, out with it. We haven't got all day to waste. Oh, uh, just uh, over there, beyond the crib. All right, show us away. Look, here, here it is, Lieutenant. Yeah, it's been broken into, all right. Strange. If someone had broken in, the dirt should be piled up here somewhere. It looks like it's fallen into the grave. Larry, you'll be out of uniform before you know it. Do we have the right to look down there, Lieutenant? Uh, technically, no. No? Well, this spot looks familiar, though. Uh, we shouldn't investigate any further without the permission of the next of kin. Let's go get it. How? I see what you mean. The gravestone's down there. Well, let's go down and find out whose grave it is. How? By going down and finding out. Are you sure you mean that, Lieutenant? If I didn't mean it, I wouldn't have said it. Scared? Well, why do I always get hooked up with these spook details? Monsters, graves, bodies. Oh, all right. Casket's here, but nobody's in it. Can you read the name on the casket? It's too dark. Give me a flashlight. How about a match? We sure could try it. Let me have them. Okay. It's Inspector Clay's grave. But he ain't in it. 
we are, ghoulies, and here we are once again. It's going to be a great honor, and I'm bringing back some very uh, special guests that you might remember from a show before. Of course, things didn't always go as planned. Uh, last time, you guys were a little bit abrasive to me, but uh, nevertheless, uh, in uh, due respect to you being inducted into the Worldwide Horror Host Television and Radio Hall of Fame, well, I just thought I'd have you back on the show It'd be great to see you again, and uh, I'm glad you're here. So, how you doing, folks? Well, I uh, <laughs> I don't know what this Hall of Fame is necessarily, but I, sh I suppose I should thank you for having me back. Um, like last time, though, I must say that I don't have a whole lot of time. Hope this doesn't take that much time because I am a very, very busy man. Yeah, busy so. doing nothing. <laughs> really? But. I should thank you, Dr. Destruction, okay. for having me back on oh, of your course. show, we love as having you, you back should. On. And, you know, frankly, I am very surprised that your show is still on the air, still running. Well, the ghoulies love it. Well, you know, uh, Dr., we never did find out exactly what kind of a doctor you really are. Hmm. Well, see, I'm not a real doctor. I'm a, oh. I'm a horror host. <laughs> My goodness. You, sir, should not be referring to yourself as a doctor if you didn't study at a prestigious university. <laughs> well, you should know about studying, madam. I mean, after all, you have studied in the black magic and the black arts and hocus-pocus spells and what such. What exactly are you implying, George Orson? Doctor, I'd like to read to you a special definition of a very important word that means a lot to me. You're going to well, read. What's the definition, Mr. Wells? Well, You're going to well, read. Well, as you know, words are important to me. Both written and spoken, I am very good at. <laughs> Just saying. You aren't good at anything. <sighs> anyway, may I continue? He is a fake and a fraud. <sighs> may I continue, Doctor? Uh, continue, please. Thank you. The definition reads like this. A woman thought to have magic powers, especially evil ones, popularly depicted as wearing a black cloak, a pointed hat, and flying on a broomstick, both ugly and unpleasant, this woman. And what is that word you just defined? Witch. Witch. Well, better a <laughs> witch than a devil. Well, I see the relationship between you two hasn't changed. Of course not, but I have to ask, Doctor, why am I here again exactly? I mean, I have to say, none of these experiences have been very uh, favorable, and I have, ex I have experienced extremely unpleasantness, and this has been unrewarding every single oh, time. Oh, once again, Georgie, it is all about you, isn't well, it? Well, actually, it is all about him. What? Thank you. What are you yes. talking about? Uh, Mr. Orson Welles. Mm -hmm. You mean George Orson? Yes, <laughs> I, I'm here to inform you that uh, uh, Orson has been given uh, the honor of being inducted into the uh, horror host Television and Radio Hall <laughs> of Fame, the worldwide horror host television the and radio. Horror host Hall of Fame? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I don't know if I should feel honored or completely uh, horrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you should be honored, sir. Come on. Oh, uh, pish, we'll posh. We'll see. Why would he be inducted into anything unless it's uh, I'm a daydreamer <laughs> interested in nothing but stupid arts? Horror Hall of Shame. Artistic work in radio, film, influence, inspired, and maybe in, uh, millions of artists. You know, all his work in film, his, uh, his camera oh. angles, I mean, his, his revolutionary oh, style. I mean, I could go on forever. Oh, please, <laughs> Dr. Destruction. Whoever watches his films should have their head examined. Wow. And you know, if Georgie were to ever have one of those exams on his head, he would need two such exams because his head is that big. Well. Figuratively and literally. And you're not helping any doctor. You know, Dr. Destruction, my own real medical doctor, unlike whatever it is you call you, uh, you call yourself, <laughs> um, he told me that when I have these intimate dinner parties, you know, I usually have four people around, including myself, so three others, three other human oh, beings. Oh, can count. Three other individuals. Yes, I can, thank you. Enough from, uh, from remember, that end of the table, out. thank you. But um, you know what? This one here is so boisterous and so loud and annoying that she takes up the sound and space as the three individuals that I would invite. <laughs> That's why she's no longer invited to any of my parties or dinners, yet she still comes anyway. I mean, this one is such a nuisance, such a pest. 
Georgie, what? I would never show up to dinner with you, invited or uninvited. And if I did, in your case, we would have to have two meals because I'm certain you have more than one meal a night. I show up to dinner with you, Orson, if you ever invited me. <laughs> in the depths of your ignorance, why on earth would I invite you to have oh. dinner with me? I mean, seriously, it's not like we could converse in Shakespeare or our quality films, unlike whatever you show your sad, pathetic audiences. You were taught manners. You are so rude. Well, at least I would show up with more than frozen peas and cheap champagne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, a comedian now, huh? Again, maybe, maybe, maybe you should stick to being a pretend doctor. Truthful. That's what you're good at. Again, I am a horror host, but also a musician. I highly doubt that. Oh, yes. You don't doubt that. Sadly, and it pains me to say this, let me tell you. I've heard your music. And it's, I have to agree with Georgie. How shall I say it? Now, what is the word I am looking for? What? Horrible. Detestable. That's what you're looking for. I mean, seriously. If you had any shred of artistic decency, you would not perform on a stage ever again, what you call art and entertainment these days. How so? Well, uh, beside the cat-like noises that jump out of the instrument that you pluck and plot and plot on, then... <laughs> You might as well stick to the finger symbols. That's probably the best instrument for you. You'll be good at that. And your lyrics definitely are not Shakespeare. I would never, ever in a million years direct any Shakespearean actor to perform or play the way you do, sir. I mean, this is complete silliness. Again, although it pains me, I must agree with Georgie. Huh. Finally. But you've only heard one song, the intro song from the Crimson Theater. Oh, there's more. Dear God. Well, what lyrics do you think I should work on, Orson? Oh, You're asking him? I am so glad you asked. <clears throat> Let's start with, the ghoulies are waiting to be given a fright. Where is that Orson Welles memory? You were whip sharp. Verbatim, madam, verbatim. You Here could we go. do that in your youth. Dr. Destruction, what ghoulies? What exactly are you talking about? Does anyone even watch your show? Uh, let, let me go to the next one. Uh, your movies and hosts are cheesy. That's another line from one of your songs. Actually, well, they certainly are, so I have to agree with you there on that one. Uh, now, look out, honey, here's 13 Ghosts. Yes. If you're referring to that decently made movie, 13 oh. Ghosts, then ah. hey, I, I understand that one, okay? Uh, even if that decently film has too much quality to come out of your tongue, uh, the likes of you. Uh, let's do one last one. My fingers are burning. What foolishness! <laughs> Well, I always admired you. I had a poster of you on my wall as a kid. It was actually a picture from uh, you when you hosted uh, Orson Welles' Great Mysteries. Oh, boy. I cannot believe you were ever a child. I can't believe anybody watched your films. Who didn't? Because your films are so heavy, <laughs> as in heavy weight. May I continue, Doctor? I've got uh, something else to say really quick. No. no, 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 let me let me finish first. Let me finish. Um, I doubt, Doctor, you know what it's like to be young. Oh, not that. Unlike me. Not that. <laughs> not that. You should study those lyrics and the way I delivered no, them. Don't. Then you could understand what truly is, uh, what truly stands the test of time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Regardless, Mr. Wells, I'm honored to be the one indicting you in the worldwide indicting. horror host. You're indicting him. Indicting. Indicting. I thought Did you I were indicting? inducting him. Uh, you well, should uh, be indicted. I, I, I've hey. got a little something special for you here, Orson. Uh, I thought you'd like to try my very own uh, Dr. Destruction's Old Fashioned Egg Salad uh, Recipe. Here's some for you, uh, Grandma. There's uh, utensils right there. I'm utterly repulsed. <clears throat> Dr. Destructions, good old-fashioned egg salad. Try some today. Mm. No jokes, Mr. Wells. It's really happening. A great honor to introduce you into the worldwide television, radio, horror host, Hall of Fame, right here on Crimson Theater. First of all, when is this little event of yours happening? It's happening July 21st. Oh. It's streamed, yes. In July? Where the peas grow? When the peas <laughs> grow? I mean... The jokes, they continue on. I tell you, okay. It's, it's no joke, yes. Mr. Watson. The nice ad to I, I know, would please. not finish 
I understood that, but let me just say, you, sir, are also where you deserve to be, in this pathetic town called Kenosha, Wisconsin. I mean, for I, I pity the fools. Did you see our are, trolley? Good for you. You have a trolley. Would you like a trophy for that? Well, yes. I mean, seriously. You gotta get it when you can. <laughs> all those, all those people who stayed in Kenosha to watch your pathetic Crimson Theater television My show. Oh yes, your ghoulies, as you call them. Of course, I must admit, for you being on the air for so long, maybe you do you deserve... You are from Kenosha, Georgie. <sighs> I left Kenosha, madam. With your parents. <laughs> Come on, I left. I had the good you decency of leaving. You were six. And your I'm, what parents I'm, moved to Chicago, Illinois. Grandmother, what I'm trying to say is that Dr. Destruction has had his show on the air for so long now. 20 maybe, years. 20 years. That, that, that actually is incredible. That is incredible. Um, is maybe incredible. maybe I, you should deserve some incredible. kind of a, some kind of I don't know, recognition of some kind. Of course, I don't know what that would be, an award, medal. I don't know if even you deserve that. But uh, that said, you know what? I'm putting my foot down right now. I have been here far too long. Well, you, you haven't tried the egg salad yet. It's made specially for you. I, I see that. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, can you handle that? Are you okay? I've tried the mm -hmm. egg salad. Mm -hmm. I know how to be a good guest. <laughs> there you go. And what did you think, uh, Grandma? I thought the egg salad was very, very good. You always were the head of your class. <laughs> I am the head of my class. <sighs> uh, once more, it's time for me to leave. I'm ready to go back to L.A. right this minute. You were See all my manners. people. You know what? You were I've taught had enough. manners from Look your Look at this mother. rubbish. You were this is what manners. I'm served? You were taught manners. I you taught you me? manners as well as your mother. How can you disgrace your mother, Beatrice Ives Wells? It's you, true. You know what? In L.A., the people there may be fake, but at least when they're not from Kenosha. When you are they're from not. Kenosha, and when you are served food, you at least try it. You know what? Come along, Mary. Let's leave together because they might actually have room enough for you in the cargo area. <laughs> oh, please. Why would I go anywhere with you? But if I were to go somewhere with you, Georgie, I might as well just fly on your back because you, sir, are the size of a jumbo <clears throat> jet. Although lately, the more that I look at you, you're the size of a flying saucer, I'd say. Wow, wow, that's pretty brutal. Body shaming True. in the 20th, first century. Body shaming, not shaving. I, well, you, whatever you're into. She, she likes to correct everything, so. I'm always right. All right, ghoulies, I can't. I uh, taught manners. <laughs> All right, ghoulies, I can't say that uh, that didn't go as uh, well as I thought it would. I'd like to thank you both. Uh, uh, for coming on the show oh, yes. once again. Of course. Uh, 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 I hope someone's keeping the uh, grave site warm for you. That looks disgusting. Try the eggs, though. Please. Try the eggs. Don't be afraid of my eggs. <laughs> this looks... And the peas, too? Try... Uh, try them together. Try the... Yes, I did that. Oh, look at... Oh. I am mortified. There you go, another satisfied customer, Dr. Destruction's Old Fashioned Egg Salad. Okay, Ghoulie. But meanwhile, at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Right, G2. Come in. Yes, of course. I'll keep in touch. Come in, Colonel Edwards. Close the door. At ease, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Sit down. I uh, understand, Colonel, you've been on tap for many of our saucer attacks. I'm in charge of field operations, sir. You believe there are such things as flying saucers, Colonel? Yes, sir. You've seen them? Yes, sir. You realize there's a government directive stating that there is no such thing as a flying saucer? Yes, sir. Do you stand by your statement that you've seen flying saucers? Well, uh... Yes, sir. This could mean a court-martial admitting this against direct orders. General Roberts, may I speak freely? You may. How could I hope to hold down my command if I didn't believe in what I saw and shot at? 
I uh, like you, Colonel. Thank you, sir. There are flying saucers. There's no doubt they are in our skies. They've been there for some time. What are we going to do about them? Who knows? Then uh, they really are there. I thought you were convinced of that. I am. We've had contact with them. Contact? How? Radio. They speak our language? Well, not quite. We've received messages from their spaceships. For a while, it came in as just a lot of jumbled noise. And now, sir? Well, since they first uh, tried contact with us by radio, we've developed a language computer, a machine that breaks down any language to our own. General, uh, what's this all got to do with me? Well, you've been in charge of saucer field activity for a long while. I think it's about time you heard these recordings. Do you mind? Mind? Huh. I'm anxious. This is Eros, a space soldier from a planet of your galaxy. I fully realize our language differences. However, I also know you finally have perfected the dicto robotary, or as you on Earth call it, the language computer. So you can now understand that which I speak. Since the beginning of your time, we have been far beyond your planet. It has taken you centuries to even grasp what we developed eons of your years ago. Do you still believe it impossible we exist? You didn't actually think you were the only inhabited planet in the universe. How can any race be so stupid? Permit me to set your mind at ease. We do not want to conquer your planet. Only save it. We could have destroyed it long ago if that had been our aim. Our principal purpose is friendly. I admit we have had to take certain means which you might refer to as criminal. That is because of your big guns, which have destroyed some of our representatives. If you persist in denying us our landings, then we must only accept that you do not want us on friendly terms. We then have no alternative but to destroy you before you destroy us. With your ancient juvenile minds, you have developed explosives too fast for your minds to conceive what you are doing. You are on the verge of destroying the entire universe. We are a part of that universe. This is our last... That's the end of that one. Atmospheric conditions in outer space often interfere with transmitting. How many of these recordings do you have, General? An even dozen up to now. This was the last one. We received it over a month ago. You think they mean business? We can't afford to take any chances. Come over here. You ever been to Hollywood? Oh, a couple of times, a few years ago. You're going to be there in the morning. Just a few minutes from Hollywood in the town of San Fernando, reports have come in of saucers flying so low the exhaust knocked people to the ground. There have even been stated claims of saucer landings. Major Carlson will replace you while you're out there. You're the best man for the job of attempting to contact them. Find them, Colonel. See what in hell it is they want. All right, sir. These are confidential reports, Colonel. Read them over carefully on the plane. Turn them over to intelligence when you get to Los Angeles. They'll have further orders for disposition. Yes, sir. Colonel Edwards? Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Excellency. You are many days late. It was unavoidable. We tried to transmit via televisor, but atmospheric conditions made transmission impossible. You should have transmitted as soon as conditions permitted. I thought time was of the essence. Suspicion has fallen upon our movements. 
Our ships have been viewed near the point of operations. And what has this added time gained, Eros? We have successfully risen three of the dead ones. Permit me to see one. Bring in the big one. Use your small electrode gun. I have taken two ships from your command. But that will leave only my ship. It is necessary that you continue your mission alone. I have need of your other ships elsewhere. Even though you have risen three of the Earth's dead, the plan is far from successful. And you, Eros, must prove it an operational success before more time, energy, ships, and your countrymen may be spent on it. We will not fail. Everything is on our side. Not everything. You do not have the live Earth people. You reported that your ship was viewed at the scene of your present operations. That is correct. They have been viewed many times, but not at the scene of operations. Something must be done about that. Stop him, Turner. He's close enough. Turn off your electrode gun. No! No! Stop him, Turner! I can't get it. It's jammed. Stop him, you fool! Drop the gun to the floor, Turner. The metal will break contact. <laughs> that was too close. Yes. Bring the giant here that I may get a better look at him. Yes, he's a fine specimen. Are they all this powerful on planet Earth? This one is an exception, Excellency. What are the other two like? One is a woman, the other an old man. An old man, you say? Yes, Excellency. This gives me a plan. Put the big one away. Pick up your electrode gun. Make sure it's in working order before pointing it at him. Whatever made a jam seems to have been cleared by the fall. Take him back to the ship. The old one must be sacrificed. Reland on Earth. Send the old one to enter a dwelling. Then cut the electrokinetic and turn on your ship's decomposure ray. The result will astound those watching. Astound them enough to delay their intention until you have gained your other recruits from the cemetery. Yes, Excellency. It'll be done. Report to me when this has been accomplished. Eros, the Earth people are getting closer to that which we fear. Since they will not listen or respect our existence, they cannot help but believe our powers when they see their own dead walking round again, brought about by our advancement in such things. As soon as you have enough of the dead recruits, march them on the capitals of the Earth. Let nothing stand in your way. Their own dead will be used to make them accept our existence and believe in that fact. Miss Strand, this is Colonel Edwards from Washington, D.C. Good evening, Colonel. Hello, Colonel. Colonel would like to ask you a few questions. Questions? What about, Colonel? May I uh, sit down? Oh, I'm sorry. Please do. 
I want to ask you about your strange experience the other night when you saw the flying saucer. After that, the police brought me home. I hope I never see such a sight again. Well, after your description, I don't think I'd want to see it either. One thing more. After you were forced to the ground by that blast of wind, was it a uh, hot or cold blast? It's kind of hard to explain. It wasn't hot, wasn't cold. It was just a terrific force. We, we couldn't get off the ground. The light blinded me so badly, I couldn't see a thing. We could only feel the pressure of the wind until it was gone. When the glare left us, we could see a glowing ball disappearing off in the distance. Which way? Toward the cemetery. This is the most fantastic story I've ever heard. And every word of it's true, too. That's the fantastic part of it. Colonel, we found a lot of suspicious things out in that cemetery. But then again, we didn't find anything to base a fact or suspicion on. Hey, do you hear anything? You see anything out there, Kelton? Too dark, Lieutenant. But something started stinking awful bad. There's something out there. What do you make of that? <laughs> she cut me. Didn't look that way a minute ago. What about your man? Oh, the excitement I forgot all about, Kelton. Uh, he'll be all right in a few minutes. Did you see that thing? Did you get it? We got it. What was it? It didn't fall. I fired every bullet I had. <laughs> so did I. I don't know what it was or what happened, but unless that bag of bones over there can reassemble itself, it's out of the running now. Colonel, I've been out here so often you think I've taken a lease on this place. Not a long lease, I hope. <laughs> I see what you mean. But you know, I can't help but feel the answer's out here somewhere. Is the uh, girl safe? Mrs. Trent, you better stay with the car. Stay here alone? Not on your life. Modern women. Yeah, they've been that way all down through the ages, especially in a spot like this. Yeah. Cal. Yes, sir. Stay with Mrs. Trent. All right, Lieutenant. Now, you stay close to the officer, honey. I'd feel safer with you. Now, the lieutenant knows best. Well, I don't like it, but I guess there isn't much I can do about it. You have a gun. 
Oh, no. You know how to use one? After four years in the Marine Corps? Here. You think we'll need these? You never tell. Let's get going. Expect to find out here. Well, there's only one answer to that, Mr. Trent. We'll know when we find it. Inspector Clay's grave is right over here. Is that the one you told me was broken into? Yes. Sir? Yeah. Looks to me like someone had broken off instead of in. I figured that, but that's impossible. Look, Colonel, some things just can't happen. Yeah, well, after that apparition that was draped across Mr. Trent's patio, I would say we should keep our minds open to anything. Look, Colonel, I'm a policeman. I've got to deal in facts. But I guess I'll have to go along with you. You know, I'll bet my badge right now. We haven't seen the last of those weirdies. They'll discover our ship soon. You're going to let them find us? It's the only way. These are the same men who have been so close so often. They must be halted before they can inform others about us. But there were others in the car. They'll be taken too. Send the big one for the girl and the policeman. I'll turn on the Dictal Robotary so we may converse with them. Barking up the wrong tree. One thing a policeman learns, Mr. Trent, is patience. Where's that burn spot you mentioned? Right over the... Look. We'll investigate, but move carefully. Instructions, old fashioned egg salad, bread from special chickens in Summers, Wisconsin. Do yourself a favor and try Dr. Destruction's old fashioned egg salad. Our chickens are some of the best. You won't find them anywhere else. Dr. Destruction's old fashioned egg salad. Try some today. A moment or two more and you will be the first live Earth people ever to enter a celestial ship. Wow. Boy, how can anything that big hide for so long a time? Never heard metal sound like that before. What do you see? Only my reflection. Must be some kind of one-way glass. I wonder how you get into this thing. I'm not sure I want to find out. They're just outside. You can open the outer hatch now. Look out! Be 
Going in that thing? That's what we're here for. I don't know. The way these things speed around, we might just get in there and off it goes. That's the chance we take. Well, I took a chance on those earlier airplanes. Might just as well see what the inside of one of these looks like. Got your guns ready? I'll tell you one thing. If a little green man pops out of me, I'm shooting first and asking questions later. Wouldn't it be better to kill a few now than, with their meddling, permit them to destroy the entire universe? You're always right, Eros. Of course. But those are not my words. Those are the words of the ruler. Now you two stay right where you're at. We will do as you command. For the moment. No, for the moment about it. You just do as I tell you. You do not need guns. Maybe we think we do. They would be of no use to you now. They've been mighty useful before on flesh and blood. And you two look like you've got a lot of both. True, they would be effective upon us. If you were to have the opportunity to use them... Mister, if you don't get away from that control board, I'll show you just how effective they can be. Shall we talk now or wait? Your friends will be here shortly. What friends? Those you left at the vehicle. If you've done anything to Paula... Take it easy, Mr. Trent. Oh, I assure you no harm has come to her. Would you like to see? Next time you try that, I won't aim at the board. You're a headstrong young man. I was only going to turn on the televisor so you could see her movements. Go ahead, my friend, but move very carefully. She's only fainted. You fiend. I? A fiend? I am a soldier of our planet. I? A fiend? We did not come here as enemies. We came only with friendly intentions. To talk. To ask your aid. Our aid? Yes. Your aid for the whole universe. But your governments of Earth refused even to accept our existence. Even though you've seen us, heard our messages, you still refuse to accept us. Why is it so important that you want to contact the governments of our Earth? Because of death. Because all you of Earth are idiots. Now you just hold on, Buster. No, you hold on. First was your firecracker, a harmless explosive. Then your hand grenade. They began to kill your own people a few at a time. Then the bomb. Then a larger bomb. Many people are killed at one time. Then your scientists stumbled upon the atom bomb. Split the atom. Then the hydrogen bomb, where you actually explode the air itself. Now it brings the total destruction of the entire universe served by our sun. The only explosion left is the solar benite. Why, well, there's no such thing. Perhaps to you, but we've known it for centuries. Your scientists will stumble upon it as they have all the others. But the juvenile minds which you possess will not comprehend its strength until it's too late. You're way above our heads. The solar benite is a way to explode the actual particles of sunlight. Why, well, that's impossible. Even now, your scientists are working on a way to harness the sun's rays. The rays of sunlight are minute particles. Is it so far from your imagination they cannot do as I have suggested? Why, a particle of sunlight can't even be seen or measured. Can you see or measure an atom? 
Yet you can explode one. A ray of sunlight is made up of many atoms. So what if we do develop this solarite bomb? We'd be even a stronger nation than now. Stronger. You see? You see? Your stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. That's all I'm taking from you. Get back here, you fool. Yeah. Let him finish. It's because of men like you that all must be destroyed. Headstrong, violent, no use of the mind God gave you. You talk of God? You also think it impossible that we too might think of God? You, who wear the uniform of your country, you see, I wear the uniform of my country. Yes, we've had to use drastic means to get to you, but you left us no alternative. When you have the soul of a knight, you have nothing. Nor does the universe. You speak of solar and night, but just what is it? Take a can of your gasoline. Say, this can of gasoline is the sun. Now, you spread a thin line of it to a ball, representing the earth. Now, the gasoline represents the sunlight, the sun particles. Here we saturate the ball with the gasoline, the sunlight. Then we put a flame to the ball. The flame will speedily travel around the earth, back along the line of gasoline to the can or the sun itself. It will explode this source and spread to every place that gasoline, our sunlight, touches. Explode the sunlight here, gentlemen. You explode the universe. Explode the sunlight here, and a chain reaction will occur direct to the sun itself and to all the planets that sunlight touches, to every planet in the universe. This is why you must be stopped. This is why any means must be used to stop you. In a friendly manner, or as it seems, you want it. He's mad. Mad? Is it mad that you destroy other people to save yourselves? You have done this. Is it mad that one country must destroy another to save themselves? You have also done this. How then is it mad that one planet must destroy another who threatens the very existence? That's enough! <laughs> In my land, women are for advancing the race, not for fighting man's battle. Life is not so expansive on my planet. We don't cling to it like you do. Our entire aim is for the development of our planet. What happened to you? How come you're all alone? I asked for lots of help. You sounded drunk or something on the radio. If I didn't see it with my own eyes, I'd never believe it. Believe what? It was horrible. And he almost broke my shoulder. Look, what are you trying to say? If you don't make sense, we'll never get to the bottom of this. Now, who slugged you? Inspector Clay. What? It was Clay, all right. Only not like we remembered him. Well, his leg was busted into, wasn't it? Next, you'll tell me you saw skeletons. We did, earlier. Now I know you're off your rocker. All of us saw it. The lieutenant, the colonel, everybody. Where's the lieutenant now? We've got to find him. Mrs. Trent is gone. I was left here to guard her. But Clay showed up and put me out of the running. And the second time tonight, and I'm getting darn tired of it. Which way were they going? Off that way. Come on. Then one day it could all be gone. One big puff of smoke and ball of fire. All that out there. The stars, the planets, all just an empty void. You two had better come along with us. Come with you? Where? The police station. <laughs> so it seems you think you have the upper hand. Look out that window.
Jeff. She is unarmed. But he would kill in seconds if I so choose. Holy cow! Look there. It's clay, all right. There's no mistaking that. And he's got Mrs. Trent. Get your gun ready. From all I've seen tonight, guns won't do any good. Clay is dead, and we buried him. How are we going to kill somebody that's already dead? Dead! And yet there he stands. That other one earlier, I emptied a full clip into. I'm seeing it. That's the only reason I'm listening to you. Look, I've got an idea. Hurt him or not, we've got to try something. I'm going to sneak up behind him and whop him over the head. That ought to make a move. Follow me. Even when Clay was alive, he couldn't run fast enough to catch me. So when he does, you grab Mrs. Trent and run like lightning in the opposite direction. Oh, you think it'll work? Know of anything else to try? Oh, I'll be all right. Take care of the others. Your men have felled the big one. This could only happen because the electrode ray is off. He'll walk again when I turn it on. All that? Right there. Suppose the lieutenant and the others are in that thing. Well, well supposing there are margins or something in there. Come on, let's go. Open up in there. Open up. Get that door open. Colonel, I wouldn't know one switch from another. Jeff, the ship's on fire. We'll see of them, perhaps. But sooner or later, there'll be others. Look! Have they caught that woman? That thing yet? Hey, that's right. There's another ghoul running loose. And it's my guess that she'll look like him. With the ship and the ray gun gone, they have no control. We gotta hand it to them, though. They, they're far ahead of us. You have seen this incident based on sworn testimony. Can you prove that it didn't happen? 
Perhaps on your way home, someone will pass you in the dark, and you will never know it, for they will be from outer space. Many scientists believe that another world is watching us this moment. We once laughed at the horseless carriage, the airplane, the telephone, the electric light, vitamins, radio, and even television. And now some of us laugh at outer space. God help us in the future. Yeah, ghoulies, I hope you enjoyed tonight's horrifying horror uh. drama, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Um, uh, truly, uh, it's very obvious how much uh, Ed Wood did uh, uh, admire you, Orson Welles, and try to follow in your footsteps. Who, who, who didn't admire me, seriously? Uh, that's true. I didn't. <clears throat> well, that's another story. So. And, of course, we had Vampyra, who is actually, uh, Vampyra actually was also recently inducted into the television and radio Horror host Hall of Fame. Oh, so Worldwide television. So this Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Fame is an actual thing. It's it an is, actual it's event. It's a very prestigious mm. award, sir. She was the best part of that film, I must admit. Well, hubba hubba. <laughs> uh, uh, Vampyra. <laughs> I, I, she had a great career. Very first. Please, one of the let's keep this out first. of the gutter. I know it's difficult for you. Well, ma'am. I mean, after I sprang for this beautiful dinner. Yes, what is up with this? Why are there peas? I thought you liked peas. Oh, again with the jokes. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, it's a joke. Unfinished oh, so you two are business. batting up against me. I get it. Okay. Well, you yeah. know. Again. I, we, facts, we've had conversations facts about you, Mr. Are Wells. facts, Georgie. Uh-huh. Hope you don't expect me to actually eat this. We, we need a shot of you eating peas before oh. we conclude tonight's horrifying show. <clears throat> we'll see about that. Okay. Plan 9 from Outer Space, of course, if you've ever seen the Tim Burton movie, Ed Wood. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people haven't seen that one. Even some of the most hardcore Johnny Depp, Tim Burton fans have not seen Plan 9 from Outer Space or uh, uh, Ed Wood. Have no idea. Ed Wood, of course, uh, is a uh, biopic, uh, loosely based a biopic on, of course, uh, Ed Wood's life. And Bela Lugosi, Martin Landau played Bela Lugosi and won and an Academy won Award. And won the Academy Award. And a rather disputed uh, performance, but uh, well, uh, people... I, I have to it. say, Bela Lugosi, as a whole as an actor, was uh, underappreciated and underused with all these B-movies. They should have hyped him up even more. Well, actually, Well, he I was think, no Frankenstein. I, I, well, I <laughs> think he <laughs> uh, upstaged Karloff every yeah. chance he got, actually. Uh, that that and that's a fact in just about every other movie. See, I don't I even have know. Seen I would say we could have a long debate on whether or not it was Bela Lugosi or Lon Chaney Sr. was the greatest mm. horror actor, mm. uh, and mm. Vincent Price, of course. But uh, it, it's a toss-up, at least from the you know the original Universal films. Uh, I'd have to put a, my money on Bela Lugosi. Mm. Bella Lugosi I would agree. played you're everything on the stage you're before he came to America. You're obviously a very poor man. What's that? You're obviously a very poor man. A poor man. To put all of your money on Bella Lugosi. Ah, I put every last dollar on Bella Lugosi. Thank you. Because he'd be a winning bet. That's why. There you <laughs> go. When you have Orson Welles agreeing with you on Crimson oh. Theater. Oh. Well, uh, you know. I don't. Okay. I don't like to often, but this time I will agree with That's you. That's a death. There knell. you go. That's uh, a death. No. Of course, lots of fun coming up. The fall season is almost upon us. Uh, the Ghost of Orson Welles. Now that could be a production. What do you think? No. Orson Welles returns to Kenosha oh. to wreak havoc on the city. Anything with my name involved should be a sure hit. There you go. <laughs> Jane Eyre. Why well, she always laughing at this? I don't know. But don't Jane Eyre was a great hit. Uh, uh huh. Great see. movie. Because I know you, Georgie. And of course, you probably never looked as uh, as gelatinous as you, you did were. in uh, in Touch of Evil. <laughs> gelatinous. I always looked good, didn't I? Yes, yes, yeah, yes you were a handsome yes, man. You didn't need the beard. As a younger man, he was a handsome man. Uh-huh. 
Fair I was still wondering, do you still have the girdle from uh, Citizen Kane? <laughs> <clears throat> I, uh, How many would he need now, Doctor? Four? Uh, well, I'll leave that up to you. You can <laughs> take measurements after the show. We'll get him fitted up. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll tell you after the show. Okay. <laughs> Is I'm that not all? To, that's, as far as I'm concerned, I want to get done with this. So. Uh, well, we've got a little more to do. But, I'll uh, do it. Okay. You know, oh. we've, uh, we've got some Paul Masson champagne. <laughs> uh, backstage, we're gonna have a rap. Whoa, we gotta have a rap party for this. Oh, this is a great event. Orson, so we have some Paul Masson George and champagne. Orson drunk. I must say, it's and never boring when I arrive. We have frozen peas. for you. Yes, uh, mm. frozen peas. Mm. Uh, yes, I we see the peas. We don't have the, the, the farm-fed beef. Yes, huh? the farm-fed beef that Mr. Briggs. <laughs> and we had a, a very special taxidermist come in and taxiderm Dean Martin, so we can do a special reboot of uh, the Dean Martin roast. You were so commonly uh, seen on. Yes, a lot a lot of fun times with that. Uh, and of course, you probably didn't see that though, did you? And, and of course, the Horror Host Hall of Fame, of course, is uh, honoring you, probably <laughs> because of your television show, Orson Welles' How much Great did you Mysteries. pay them? How much did you pay them? Grease their palms. Oh, please. They, they begged me to be a part of it. <laughs> How I, about Vampyra? I understand you and Vampyra had, a, you know. <clears throat> Vampyra and I go way back. Uh, Orson. Orson had very loose morals. Uh, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. I heard the first time that you saw very a vampire loose. in a very scantily clad vampire that uh, you looked at her and said, uh, nice carcass. <laughs> Is that you, Mr. Wells? <sighs> oh, boy. I am embarrassed. Yes, you should be. Maybe you should leave, Grandma. Your mother <laughs> would Yes, I, I might have said that, and I've I got to say it was... True then and true now. <laughs> All right, ghoulies, that wraps this show up. Anyway, you have a horrifying week. Thank we'll God. see you next time on Dr. Destruction's <laughs> Crimson Theater. Ah, the sun. It's getting a little hot out here. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps you better get inside. There you are, ghoulies. I've got a very distinct honor tonight. I get to introduce and induct Orson Welles into the Worldwide Television and Radio Horror Host Hall of Fame, which is a distinct honor considering Orson Welles is from my hometown of Kenosha. As a child, I always knew who Orson Welles was uh, from very different television performances or his Orson Welles' Great Mysteries. I had a picture of Orson Welles on, on my wall in my bedroom when I was a mere 10 years old. Well, later in film school, in the university, of course, I uh, discovered Citizen Kane, Jane Eyre, uh, Touch of Evil, and many of the great films that Orson Welles did and his uh, incredible, incredible things that he brought to film, radio, and television. Of course, who could forget him reading H.G. Wells uh, in the Mercury Theater, of course, and causing a panic when he described War of the Worlds, as if it was actually happening for real. So Orson Welles is a fantastic figure in my life. He's larger than life, and I'm so pleased to announce that he is inducted into the worldwide television and radio horror host Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. And a special shout out, thank you again, Keymaster Poe. Hello, I'm Orson Welles. Well, once I found out that I was being inducted into this, whatever this is, then uh, I realized that I needed to make a speech. So I always happen to have a speech ready and prepared for on me because I received so many awards and I want to be prepared because that's who I am. However, knowing that this was a part of Dr. Destruction's thing, whatever he does, this show, 
then I also wanted to adjust my, uh, my speech a little bit. So that's what I did. So here we go. <sighs> Well, here I am once more, not knowing precisely what to say. Apparently, I'm being inducted into the Worldwide Horror Host Hall of Fame. This makes me quite uneasy, since I am being inducted into something I never knew existed in the first place. I'm being inducted for reasons unknown, in a place I swore I'd never return to, by the biggest imbecile I know. That's you, Dr. Destruction, wherever you are. <clears throat> Perhaps I'm being inducted due to the massive panic caused uh, by reading War of the Worlds. Uh, of course, it was the fault and idiocy of every listener to take something so creative yet mundane, yet hold on to its every word, believing the work of science fiction to be completely and utterly true. Yes, since I was born, I have been surrounded by idiots, especially here in Kenosha, which is why I left. There are a few people I would like to mention. Thank you, dear old grandmother, for your consistencies in your hocus-pocus black arts, your, cons your constant breathing down my neck over anything I do, and for showing up to dinner unannounced or when you're not invited. It's for these facts alone that have helped solidify the very reason I do not get together with my family. After all, they are the devil's curse. <clears throat> Next on the list, Dr. Destruction. We have spent many miserable shows together. I always regret saying yes to you. I assure you that it will never, ever happen again. You are a foolish, idiotic, and terribly disgusting host. You are, you know, this morning, the pickle I, that I ate had far more talent than you'll ever possess. I feel bad for the mere mortals you have scammed into watching your pathetic shows for the last, well, for far too long. I beg you to destroy your mind-controlling device so that they may be released from your grip. The people will be released and you'll allow them to return to their normal, mundane lives. And finally, to the viewers and listeners out there who have supported me throughout my incredibly accomplished career, I deeply, truly, humbly thank you. I realize that I would not have a career without you. Go live your lives, be creative, invent, create, write, film. If you want a happy ending, that depends, of course, on where you stop your story. Unfortunately for me, my story stops here in this miserable little venue. Dr. Destruction, never call me again. Thank you. I'm honored myself to be inducted into the Television and Radio Horror Host Hall of Fame, the Worldwide Television and Radio Horror Host Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a great honor for, uh, for me, I have to say. Since I was a young kid, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to create a horror character. I wanted to have a haunted house. And uh, who would have known that those dreams of a 10-year-old would uh, finally become some sort of convoluted uh, reality and uh, it's been a pleasure to be horror hosting for 20 years for haunting for 30 and uh, well playing music for just about my whole life uh, I have a lot of people to thank the list is lengthy I would have to thank that anybody that ever was a guest or a character on my show I thank them I thank Kenosha Community Media uh, in Kenosha Wisconsin for what they've done for me uh, of course Jason Rimkus and of course our very own Ralph Pirro for many years. I have to give a shout out to uh, Nick Clapper in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, we uh, did the show in Milwaukee, uh, for Milwaukee for quite a few years. A lot of fun times with Nick Clapter. And I have to also uh, thank Christopher Kai House and Heather House for keeping the uh, current uh, version of uh, Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater on the air. I'd like to thank everybody in the Kenosha area uh, Jerry Smith's Pumpkin Farm, uh, and uh, Mayor John Antaramian for keeping our access channel, uh, the Kenosha Community Media Channel in Kenosha going. Uh, I thank you all. Uh, VPod TV, thank you as well. Uh, anyone that's ever been associated with the show, I thank you. I'm honored beyond belief. Thank you so much.